All right, so we're going to add to our list of data structures that we know. We've already worked with two main data structures, lists and dictionaries. And now we're going to add tuples, sets, and arrays. And arrays are really just lists, but a lot of other languages use the term array to talk about especially multi-dimensional arrays where you have essentially a list of lists. So we're going to talk about those in a separate video. We're going to start with tuples as those are less commonly used, especially for beginners, and they're very similar to lists. So the biggest difference between tuples and lists is that um, lists can be changed. You can drop items from a list. You can add items. You can change an item at a particular location, etc. You can't do that with tuples. So if I have, as an example here, this tuple, and the reason I know it's a tuple is that it is surrounded by parentheses as opposed to square brackets. So I have this tuple that has a last name and then a number. So that might be um, an ID associated with a last name, a good use for a tuple because I can't change that information um, and you might not want to. So if I hit enter, then I have this um, tuple here. And if I were to try to add something um, the way that one might add uh, anything, let's say we're going to add hello to our tuple. Um, as you can see, I get an error that says, you know, I can't add anything to it. Similarly, if I wanted to um, reassign um, and say change the name that was associated with this ID that's in here from Blankenship to Smith and this is how one would do it in a list you would have the name of your list brackets the item that you want to swap out and then the, what you want to swap it out with and it again yells at me so I can't I can't do that so tuples um, do have some things in common with a list. I can actually find out how long my tuple is. Um, I can find out the max value of my tuple, which is a little weird in this case since uh, I have a string and a number in there. I can actually add two tuples together. Um, so I actually have another tuple. Let's see if we make another tuple. Um, and then I add them together. I now have a tuple, as you can see down here at the bottom, that has all of this in it. So that's the one way that you can change what's in your tuple, but you have to add it by tuple. You can also loop over your tuple, so I can um, print my items just like we did with lists so it will print them out. You can also find the index um, of different things so if I do this it's going to put that and if I do this it should put the number. So those basic functions same as a list. So the other um, since tuples can't be changed, can't be, um, aren't mutable, they can be used as keys in dictionaries, which might be useful for something. Um, a lot of uh, functions sometimes return tuples because you don't want them to change. Um, so it's just something to be aware of, and if you're in a situation where you feel like you need um, you know, the items in, in a data structure and you don't want them to be altered, then a tuple is a good thing to go with. Okay, so now let's talk about sets. Sets are also somewhat similar to lists in that um, they are sequences of things. Um, the easiest way to create a set is to use the set function. The cool thing about sets is that you can turn any sequence of objects, um, so I'm going to use a string here, um, but we could also use a list. So if I look at my set, I now have um, 
essentially a, a list of, uh, you'll notice, there's only one S here, right? And there are three S's in there. There's only one T. So what a set does is it generates um, a list of items, of unique items. So it automatically removes the duplicates. So um, that's a very useful thing to do. And the most common thing that people do is use sets to create unique uh, situations where you have um, words, for example, and you want just the individual letters that are in the word. Um, last year, for one way that we might have used sets is when we had our boggle game. And one of the things that we were doing was storing all our words in a list. Um, if we stored them in a set instead, it would only store the items that were unique um, so that you couldn't repeat uh, words. We came up with a function to check against the list, but a set would have been a lot easier. We wouldn't have needed to write that function. If it were a set in the first place, anytime a duplicate word came in, it would um, not add it. So, for example, if I were to try to um, add, I believe is what we use for sets. We'll find out. Um, if I tried to add another A, for example, um, it doesn't yell at me. However, there's not another A in there. On the other hand, if we were to try to add a K, you can see that I now have a K in my list. So it won't add anything that's not a duplicate. So it doesn't yell at you, but it won't create um, another item in the list if it's a duplicate. The other thing that you can do is um, find out where sets intersect. So if I create another set, and I'm just going to make it out of a word because that's fun, or string. So I can actually find out what these two sets have in common. So the way that I would do that is uh, to use, so if you want to find out um, whether an element is in, which, it, which elements are in both sets, so the intersection of the sets, if you were to draw a little diagram with overlapping circles, it's the thing that's in the middle. So I have um, my set, and I would put intersection, another set, and this should give us what they have in common. Um, so they have in common these letters here down at the bottom. We can also find out the union of these two sets. So we can do my set, and we can use this little bracket here, and another set, and this gives us a giant list of things. So that's the union of two sets, so merging them together, which you might actually want to mush them together. Um, but you might just want to see uh, all the different elements that you currently have. Um, you can see what's different between two different sets. So I can do my set, difference, another set. And you can see that the only difference is that, it, is that I have an I and a K um, in my first set. Um, you can also use the minus sign to do that. So I can say my set minus um, another set and that tells me what's different. If I do it the other way around, it should actually be the same thing. It should, it's a little bit different. So these are the elements that are in another set, but are not in my set. And these are the elements 
that are in my set but not in another set. So when you start to do things like analyzing text and, and things like that, you might find these functions useful. So you can see um, you know, what the differences are between words, between whole collections of words. If you remember way back at the beginning of the year, we were analyzing speeches. Um, this might have been one way we could have done that by using uh, sets to see, okay, here's a speech and here's a speech and let's put them all in a, each one of them in a set and then see what the differences are between them or see what the similarities are between them. So we could have used intersection to see, okay, both Romney and Obama talk about these 10 things. Now, we wrote a giant function to do that, but this, you can see, would be a lot easier. Um, so those are some of the uses of sets. Okay, so those are tuples and sets, and there's a lot more about both of them. I'm going to put some links to go with this so that you can refer to them because it's just going to depend on what you're doing and what you're going to need for um, these particular functions. So uh, we'll do arrays in a separate video.